So they marched us to a rail siding. By the way, by then there was only 5,000 left in the ghetto of the original 25,000. Right. Uh, we were put in box cars, cattle cars really, standing room only, couldn't move. And the train was moving, you know, stopped and, you know, guess changed. It took about two and a half days and we pulled into a town we noticed from looking from the car. This is sign stood off. We had no idea what it was. It turned out it was a very large extermination and labor camp. We have very messy offices. <laughs> okay, now, how old does, does this boy look like? Very young. Would you believe I was? This was several months after I was liberated. I uh -huh. had food in me. I was 18 years, not quite 18 years uh -huh. old. The day after we left the main camp of Dachau, the Americans liberated that. Uh -huh. And this, the, our camp was the same. The day after they took us out of the camp. So we were on this death march, I think, for about five days. And they would. Uh, the guards in back would kill anybody that dropped out. And we were, they would, for some reason, if I remember correctly, they would march us at, at night. And during the day, they'd find some place in the woods or something where we camped. And I remember on May 2nd, and we had that one blanket we owned, uh, we woke up and the guards were gone. And I remember it was in the Bavarian Alps, it was about two feet of snow on top of us. And prisoners were roaming around, you know, scrounging, trying to get food. Uh, my brother and I, and as I said, I, I was bossing my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, when. Uh, we knocked on the door of some little house in that village and an elderly German couple took us in. First thing, they took our clothes and burned it. And it's the first time in a long time. We slept in a, we had a bath, we slept in a bed. This really grew pretty fast, but 14 years, every week, Chicago to Knoxville. Wow. Yes, they didn't have frequent flyers. That <laughs> and finally, in 1977, I moved to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, worked very hard. I wasn't home a lot, so our children, and my wife wanted six children, and I negotiated three. <laughs> we wound up with four. I was married for 50 years. My wife died of breast cancer, so we lived in Knoxville then. And I ran into Mimi. Mimi lived in Morristown, and because my factory was there, I knew her and her husband, and ran into her and she lost her husband. So we got married. We've been married, is it 14 years or 13? 13. 13. Mm -hmm. And she tells <laughs> me I'm happy. She tells me <laughs> I'm <laughs> happy. She tells me I'm happy and I am very happy. You tell him every day. <laughs> yeah. So in brief and since I did have, after I sold my business, I started a new business with the German company, and everybody kept asking me, are you crazy, you know, the questions I got asked with different groups, do I have nightmares, I don't, I really let go. So many people 
endure things that are so much less than what you did and can't ever let go of them. That you're, I, we know love many. You're an amazing, yeah. amazing person. Can I ask just one question? Yes, yeah, sure. In but, light of the comments that were made, how did that make you feel? Did you mean that feel? feel? Yeah. You know something? I don't think it's even worth, in my opinion, it's a nutcase. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it doesn't even reserve, deserve an answer. I think that when people make comments like that through ignorance and complete non-understanding sure. of what that was and compare something that killed almost the whole Jewish population mm -hmm. of Europe with applying for health care, this is beyond That's beyond I ignorance. I don't know what to, to call that man because I hope that they do not vote him back into office. And I think that people, when they speak out in this kind of way, you know, Elie Wiesel, the famous mm -hmm. uh, Elie Wiesel, he said that the worst thing that can happen is silence. Mm -hmm. If people don't speak up when there's hatred being spoused or whatever, you, you have to, I think you have to speak out. I agree. It's why I'm in this race. Because there have been, and this is just really the latest in a know, string made, of things. He's made, he's made Tennessee the laughing stock of the country. He's wonderful for the late night comedians. I, <laughs> I, it's why I'm in the race. I'm a local Knoxville girl. I've lived here most all of my life. I moved away a few years um, when I got married. But this is a great place. And we don't need representation that demeans people and demeans their experiences and belittles what and, people and endure in their life and their lives, just their lives in general.